Hello, everybody watching us on YouTube, Facebook, all of the random medias. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to be chatting with Jonathan, um, who works at OASE, but also does some other really, really cool stuff with Native Fish. So we're going to have chit chat about that. So hi, Jonathan. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? It's good. How are you doing? Fantastic. It's, all it's right. Good. Well, good. So, all right, tell us what you do. What do you do for a living? <laughs> all right. So, um, I work for Oase. Um, is a, a German engineering company. Uh, uh, pretty strong in the pond and water garden space. They've been around for seventy plus years, and um, you know, uh, we, we do it all for the most part. You know, we uh, pond and water gardening equipment, Pondavax. You know, all sorts of stuff, and we even have our whole indoor aquarium line. So, um, you know canister filters, our new hang on the back filters, heaters, you know, everything for that space, and then even our own line of small acrylic tanks and things of that nature. So, you know, large breadth of uh, products to choose from and whatnot. So uh, I work as the territory account coordinator for uh, the Midwest region. So fancy word for uh, sales rep and whatnot. So uh, <laughs> my, yeah, my duty is uh, to basically drive around and uh, visit stores, get them set with products that they need. Um, you know, help them with any products, any customers that are having issues or things like that, just all around support, that sort of thing, um, which, you know, offers me some unique opportunities to be able to see some of the really cool stores in the Midwest and yeah. uh, get to travel to some of the cool trade shows and things of that nature. So, uh, you know, it's a win-win for me because I get to get to meet some cool aquatic folks and get to go <laughs> to some of the, the cool shows and uh, be present and just all around, uh, you know, kind of live a life that's a career path within the hobby, right? So, um, yeah. That's always a great thing to find. Yeah. So that's, that's where we met was at uh, global uh, a few months ago, which was a cool show. It was good yes. to get back to shows again. And uh, yeah, started talking about some of the fun underwater and video and photo stuff that you're doing and looking to get into. And I know you do a lot around natives. So tell yes. us a little bit about this stuff. So native fish have always kind of been uh, a very strong interest to me. Um, it goes back to going to school for aquatic biology up in central Wisconsin at St University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Um, I was very fortunate to have had a professor there, or multiple professors really, that I can pay homage to as far as getting me interested in the sciences and things like that. Uh, but specifically, Justin Sipiorski, um, who happens to also be a, a scientific illustrator as well, too, um, as well as a slew of other students and colleagues at the time there that uh, were all interested. It was a great school to go to in, in terms of uh, native fish and whatnot. Um, in fact, if I remember correctly, our uh, ichthyology exam was like on all 400 plus native fish species that you had to memorize characteristics, differences, you know. Oh, wow. You know, That's not messing 30, around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 30 to 40 uh, dorsal rays in this fish versus this species, you know, all that fun stuff. So, um, Shout out to them because that's really where a lot of my uh, interest flourished for native fish and, uh, you know, sort of ecology and uh, all that fun stuff that was carried over into the hobbyist side. Um, I have pretty much for the majority of my life worked in the aquarium industry, whether it was doing maintenance gigs, uh, working at storefronts here in Chicagoland area growing up in high school. Um, and then even moving back here, I've worked at, you know, phytoplankton labs, all sorts of different odds and ends jobs and all that fun stuff. So um, throughout all that, you know, and all the different niches that you can get into in the aquarium trade, native fish have really kind of stuck with me just because, I mean, they're kind of this uh, uh, unseen gem, even among fishermen and, and people that are into just fishing in general, you know, I think we all know what a bass is, but how many people know what a, what a rainbow darter is, or even an orange throat darter, or a, uh, sure you know, a uh, 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 black-sided darter or something like that, right? There's there's all these really cool species that are feeding those native you know, mm -hmm. fish that we all like to catch and, you know, eat and all that jazz that uh, just not a lot of people know about. And, um, you know, for some reasons that's good. And then for other reasons, I feel like that could be a little bit more common knowledge and is good to expose people to the, uh, the knowledge that in their little creek in the backyard, you know, maybe there's something a little bit more uh, in there that they don't know about. So- yeah, it's always, it's kind of surprising to me, like when you really see how beautiful some of our natives are, that people yes. don't really keep them more often or even really know about them. I mean, so many of the darters are just absolutely stunning. Oh, and I mean, yeah. I guess some of it's probably because the most beautiful are like the breeding males, but so maybe people just don't see them all the time. But I don't know, it's still kind of surprising. And we've got some really cool stuff. And yeah, Southeastern yeah. United States with like pygmy sunfish and all kinds yeah. of neat things. So 
Yeah. I don't know. Why do you think people don't know more about our native fish? <laughs> I think it's just because there's a couple, there's, well, there's a quite a few things really. Um, first and foremost, um, the legality of keeping them is kind of up in the air. Uh, uh, state to state regulations. Um, and this is something that I really want to preach right off the bat. And that is, if you're interested in native fish, you need to check your local and state guidelines as far as legality of keeping them, let alone sourcing them and things of that nature. Um, there are a couple different sites online and uh, online uh, guys at, and dealers that will, will sell these fish. Um, but it's up to you as the consumer and the buyer to know whether or not it goes against or you're okay to keep them in your uh, state and your sure. county and things of that nature. Um, reason being is because they are native fish and they are coming from similar uh, climates and e ecology, yeah. you know, um, environments and such. Uh, there's a there's a high potential of some of these species mixing into uh, native watersheds. And honestly, this goes to even bigger picture thing, and that mm -hmm. is never release fish into the wild, no matter if they're tropical or otherwise. Um, I mean, good example of that is we've got uh, dojo loaches here in the Des Plaines River in Illinois, Chicagoland area. Yeah. They become naturalized. Um, and that's, you know, that's not good. <laughs> that's not no, good. No, we don't really want invasive species all over the place. That's not so the best. First reason I would imagine why they're not more popular in the aquarium trade is because, um, yeah, legality, uh, regulations, all that stuff. And it's for good reason, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't want a bunch of people rushing to your local creek and, and disturbing the natural populations and, and things of that nature and, and causing disturbances in nature. Um, another big reason why I don't think that native fish are hugely popular in, in the aquarium trade is just because, um, you know, when you see a nice colored darter, and like you pointed out, Alex, already, um, you know, you can see that nice male, like, uh, just for example, one of the more common species that are known about most commonly would be like rainbow darters, right? Sure. Like, I think a lot of people have either heard of rainbow darters, or if you start getting into all the little things in your creek, that's one of the first. You'll see them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or it's the poster child online, along with some other species too, or rainbow mm -hmm. shiners, which you do come across in uh, the aquarium trade from time to time. That's true. You do see them sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Rainbow darters are only colorful for a certain time of the year, right? Mm -hmm. So um, most native fish have breeding seasons, primarily starting in early spring, almost sometimes right after the snow melts um, mm -hmm. in colder regions and such, um, or, you know, February to April is when you're going to see the most colored up males displaying for, yeah. for females in the creeks. And, you know, some of these creeks are very turbid, they're very, you know, even tannin stained, uh, right. if you want to talk tannins and, and <laughs> black water tanks, right? Um, which is another thing is there's so many parallels too, which is really neat. So um, we'll talk about that later. But uh, yes. yeah, no, uh, it, it has a lot to do with the regulations and also just that um, they're not going to be colorful all year round in your right. tank. Um, it has a lot to do with, you know, what ratio of males to females do you have, right? It's mm -hmm. the same thing with like, uh, like rainbow fish, for example, right? If you're keeping rainbow fish, you generally want to have uh, more females to males, you know, like a one to two ratio for every mm -hmm. male you have, you have at least two females. Um, it's going to keep them fired up, kind of displaying right. and, and, and staying colorful, um, you know, for the ladies, so to speak. So um, <laughs> that's another reason why they're not, I think, as popular. And then also thirdly, which goes into regulations and sourcing is there's just not many people breeding them, yeah. selling them, um, or statewide uh, legally collecting them. You know what I mean? Sure. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting topic, and even one that's pretty, pretty heavily talked about within the community of people that do keep native fish. Sure. Because one of the biggest things is, you know, to keep these fish around. You know, aquariums are a great tool for teaching people about them, right? Um, yep. I get quite a few folks when I post a video of a nice starter that's like, oh, well, you know, where, where can I get one? Or where, where did, where are you? Is like one of the most <laughs> common questions. I'm like, I'm somewhere in Illinois, you know, <laughs> right. half of Illinois and whatnot. And, um, you know, <laughs> I, I don't give out specific locations of where I'm at yeah. because, you know, it, I'm not collecting myself. Right. Right. Um, 
I, I have talked with some of the uh, the fish and wildlife guys here in the state and yeah. uh, here in Illinois, just for example, um, it's very kind of gray area because mm -hmm. you have uh, pathogens and, and diseases like uh, yeah. uh, viral hemorrhaging septicemia, which, you know, yeah, sounds that's a nice one. Yeah, it's just <laughs> as bad as it sounds, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's, uh, it's not good. And you don't want to transfer those things. So um, mm -hmm. a lot of the reasons why there's these regulations is to protect the watersheds in general. Uh, yep. Zebra mussels are a great example. That's one that we had a, a big scare in and probably continuing to have some uh, um, some trouble with. I apologize for that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> that on silence. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where uh, it only takes one mess up to, to for the aquarium industry to kind of put a bad spin and, and taste on things. And, you know, a lot of times we have. Now that's getting to some kind of political debate yeah, and things like right, that. Right, right. So, <laughs> can be a um, tricky I'm, topic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm just different topic for a different time. And uh, sure. uh, there's points on all sides that uh, everyone can make and all that jazz. But um, yeah, so native fish in general, though, they, they are beautiful. So I definitely say yeah. if you're interested, first and foremost, go to your local conservation center. Uh, usually will be like a park district conservation center. Sometimes they'll even have a, a public aquarium there for you to view and you to see some of the right. wildlife. Get involved. Uh, a lot of times, uh, springtime, there's fishing events that you can actually talk to like a DNR agent, et cetera, right. and get involved, ask them these questions. You know what I mean? Um, some states explicitly stay on their fishing regulations that yes, you can collect, others don't. And right. for those reasons that we mentioned before, the best way to do it is just ask, talk to them. You know what I mean? Sure. Maybe they'll give you some pointers or if it is legal, maybe they'll tell you, okay, well, if you're going to use this, you know, you need this legal size net yeah. to go in and, and, and dip net with, or, you know, sane with, or anything sure. like that, you know? Um, but I will say, you know, the perks of, of, of going past that and doing your research and doing your due diligence to, to, to do and uh, keep native fish responsibly mm -hmm. and ethically, um, it, it far outweighs, you know, the, like the benefits that you get from it, I think are amazing. You know, if sure. you're the kind of person that grew up rummaging through creeks as a kid or, you know, your, your grandparents or your parents brought you fishing your whole life, which I think a lot of us have that connection mm -hmm. with nature in that sense. Um, I think it's really cool because you can you can kind of tell that story when you're when you're just keeping a specific species of fish, right? You right. Know, in the creek, and you see something colorful flash by. Oh, it was probably a rainbow darter growing up. Mm -hmm. in case with me, right? Yep. Um, so I just think it, it, it keeping native fish hits a lot of uh, it's a lot of buttons for me personally, and. Um, you know, funny enough, they're, they're quite popular over in Europe. In fact, they're, they're quite sought after so funny. <laughs> um, in other countries, right? Um, yeah. It's that whole, like, not appreciating your backyard phenomenon, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, just the same as, like, down in Peru and stuff like that, um, you know, their common fish in their creeks and everything are what we strive to keep and right. are in our local fish stores, right? It's funny. So, um, yeah, go, go talk to your local fish store. Um, sometimes, you know, they'll have swamp darters and bycatch of their ghost shrimp from Florida and things sure. like that, you know, and you, yeah, not a bad place to start. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, talk to your local fish game and wildlife, uh, mm -hmm. talk to your local fish store, um, do some online research, look at your local fishing regulations. You just, you gotta do that, uh, before you can keep the cool candy colored darters, right? Stuff, right? <laughs> just be responsible is the biggest thing because again, we don't want, you know, restrictions coming down and being put in place for the no. wrong reasons right exactly um so that's that's big for me because i get a lot of questions from people all over the the the, the states and they're asking mm -hmm. me oh well, well can i keep this or what's in my local creeks and stuff i'm like you know you have some cool stuff here but you live in tennessee and you know you can't yep. really collect in tennessee without scientific permits and things like that you know yeah um, to your point earlier southeastern u.s is the most biologically diverse stuff. region of the <laughs> yeah. U.S. In fact, I believe you guys, you know, Amazon has had an, uh, a whole special uh, yes. one of your magazines. It's just all on native fish. And you had some that was a great people one. People writing articles like, you know, Derek Wheaton, uh, mm -hmm. Conservation Fisheries Society in Tennessee, um, quite a few other folks. And it was a great, great yeah. uh, one. So there's another resource. If you're listening to this and you want to keep <laughs> garters, 
go check out Amazonas Magazine, oh, right? Oh, thanks. Good job. That was very nice. <laughs> the Native Fish <laughs> episode, you know? Um, no, I've got that one on my shelf right next cool. to Cool. I'll, uh, I'll have to put in a link when I when I put yeah, this together good. so people can get the back issue because that was really a cool one. I and agree. Back when we were talking about rainbow darters, I've got a photo for you to, to slip in there as well, too. Yes. So um, I'll send that to you your way. Um, but yes, I know you've got some good ones on your social media. I'll have to put your links in because you've got some, some really funny stuff and also some really just very cool fish photos. To, the darters lately yeah. have been like choice. So, yeah. yeah, I try to keep it on, on social media and stuff. I try to keep it light. You know, I can go yeah. into detail about, you know, the starter and, you know, speciation between, you know, these <laughs> right. sub, subgroups and are we splitters or are we groupers as far as taxonomy goes, but sure. <laughs> It's a little, you know, it just gets to be a bit much, even for yeah, myself, be, too, you know, it can be a little dense. work. Sometimes yeah. you don't want to talk about that. But um, yeah, so I just try to post some pretty photos of pretty fish, right? And that, that's yeah, it's great. Gets people interested. And then, you know, then go check your local resources and check your, you know, if you're fishing, yeah. take a closer look what's, you know, next to your foot in the stream. If you're going trout fishing or bass fishing or not, you'll be surprised that if you look, you'll see them, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, or so maybe even river and stream snorkeling. Hmm. that's on my list oh man so yeah yeah <laughs> going into that that's been a, a recent uh obsession is i have uh taken up photography and am working on videography uh working on uh kind of scaling that up a little bit yeah. from my gopro dipping it in the pool slash creek sort of thing so <laughs> Um, I'm hoping no, the GoPro still do a great job, which is oh, they good. Do. They're it's not, not this honestly enough. amazing how, how good of a job they do considering how simple of a camera it is. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I just, the biggest thing is getting the positioning with those, you know, it is. you're looking at it. If you have it on a pole or something like that, you're looking at it from eight feet away above the water. So you have the <laughs> diffraction, you know, the, you know, yep. the difference going. And then you're like, well, is it in frame? Is it not? So that's why I'm trying oh, to get into the river snorkeling, right? Yes. Got to pull the trigger on that wetsuit and uh, the camera housing that we talked about. <laughs> uh, yep. I know. Stuff. I know. We need to do some dueling Sonys. Got to get out there for yeah. it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when that time comes, I'll be uh, messaging you a little bit more about that. So it'll be good. I know. It'll be good. That'll be fun. Um, so do you have any native tanks currently? So currently right now, um, I only have a couple of things. I don't have much, honestly. Okay. Right now, I am kind of in the uh, uh, a gray space, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I travel a lot for work. That's part of the job is that I have to travel. I travel around the Midwest. Yeah. The Midwest is a big, big expansive <laughs> area. Yeah. So from anywhere from northern Minnesota to pretty much like, you know, technically my territory, Tennessee, and even, even yeah. Texas is, is part of my area right now. So, oh boy. Yeah. It's a big yeah, one. <laughs> yeah. I haven't, haven't quite tackled that one yet. So we're working <laughs> on it, but um, yeah. So, you know, Dallas Aquashella is coming up. Yeah. And That's going to be fun. So I'll, I'll be seeing some stores in the area and all that jazz, but um, good. yeah, I, I drive a lot. So time is kind of a thing, but what better type of tank than native fish tank? Because native yep. fish are pretty hardy once they're acclimated to aquariums. Um, you know, a lot of the, the plants that mimic plants that you would see in their native biotopes and stuff, um, are also very easy, you know, mm -hmm. that scenario, Americana is a pretty common species. I think we've all yep. probably kept in our tanks from time to time. So. <laughs> um, and it's great. It's a simple one just for mimicking that, that flow, uh, movement that you see in a local Creek of, mm -hmm. uh, Potomagetan species, you know, um, all that jazz and then. Yeah. There's no risk or worry of, okay, well, am I, you know, please don't collect plants. Those are very, very. Yeah, that's a no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah that's, that's a no. If you're using everywhere, don't accidentally, you know, that's, it's an important part is if you don't know what it is, don't, don't take it. You know, Definitely not. Yeah. On top of the other things that we talked about. So. <laughs> yeah, so, that uh, makes sense. <laughs> that, common valve scenario is like an easy one that you can put in and uh, you do that, do some river rocks, do some mm -hmm. sand substrate and bam a nice filter and some flow in there. You can crank up the flow a bit too. And, and sure. you've got a great native tank and it's very easy to take care of. You're just worried about feeding and water changes, right? Yeah. Um, it's good to go. So Simple. currently I just have some rainbow shiners that are in a grow out slash holding tank. Okay. I currently have a, a, a different model of uh, an Owase tank, the Owase Highline tank. Um, currently are not available, but uh, we used to have a couple, I, I you know, 
I was lucky to, 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 to nab one before we uh, took down one of the trade show tanks. So it's, you know, got some scuffs on it and whatnot, but I'm not complaining, right? That's all right. So, It'll do just fine. <laughs> yeah, it's a 46 gallon tank. So it's going to be perfect for a cool. small group of rainbow shiners and rainbow darters. And the idea being that I'm going to try and, I don't know, use it as an educational tool online and whatnot. Um, yeah. I kind of push home doing the ethics and, and collecting sustainably and things like that if you're able to let alone just first and foremost buy from an online person if you can you know and then you have a receipt for proof of purchase so that's all I have right now but I do have a lot of plans for some other tanks so all right um, and I think those will be best left for possibly like a blog post or something or you know I mean so I won't go into too much this is just a teaser okay yes all right I'm hoping to work on I will say this (laughs) I would like to try and do some sort of true like river manifold tank where you have the bottom section of the tank that is sectioned off so you have a, a, a partitioned area underneath the substrate mm-hmm. and the actual aquascape for water to flow through in a, a laminar flow through there. That'd be nice. So you have a consistent, slow, medium flow. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of cool, cool ways to do that. Um, there's an account on Instagram, uh, Native Fish Thailand, uh, I believe is what Ooh. it is. All right. And he did the same thing, but for Native Fishes of Thailand, because yeah. the cool thing with the aquarium hobby is whichever continent you go to, there are the same, similar, not the same, similar habitats, <laughs> similar niches sure. that different fish take up that have speciated to take up those needs, like convergent evolution, right? That Absolutely. have taken up the same. So like a, a great parallel, and uh, we'll talk about South America in a second here. A great parallel would be like the, the darter tetras and the darter kerosens of South America, right? Mm-hmm. Little guys, you guys may see them at your local fish store mixed in with some other tetras as bycatch, or you'll see them as quote unquote darter tetras and stuff. Not so common, but when you do see them, you're going to go, well, what is that sitting at the bottom? And it's this right. little tetra that uh, it just sits at the bottom. And when you see it swim, it's little short bursts of, uh, of movement, mm-hmm. right? Um, and that's because they developed in faster flowing rivers in South America. I believe I want to say, you know, Blackwater Creeks and stuff. And they kind of inhabit that, that bottom benthic layer, right? right? Just the same as darters do. So again, it's the parallels between it. And I think that's one of the most interesting parts of keeping aquariums is the connection to nature and the connection to the ecology um, that they provide in yeah. your home. I mean, what is cooler than having a fish that um, you've researched the habitat, you've seen it, you've seen all the the riparious growth of mm-hmm. plants and, 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 and replicated that in, in, in physical, you know, middle of, uh, Northern Illinois, you know, <laughs> right. Chicagoland area. Like you're the first <laughs> away, not the furthest. Uh, I suppose you could be up in Canada or something like that, but, uh, we're well, pretty far. <laughs> yeah. Iceland or whatnot. Um, but, um, it's still, it's, it's pretty neat. And, and the connection between different continents and how there's fish that literally have the same role in their habitat, mm-hmm. um, but are a whole continent apart and have evolved specifically, you know, yeah. it's, just, oh, it's pretty know. amazing. I it's cool. No, uh, I think it, it, it's great. Know, it's, I mean, and all the biotope tanks now, and I'm so glad more and more people are focusing on that because oh, yeah. it's such a cool way to learn, to kind of promote different facets of the aquarium hobby. Like it just, yeah, it, it's so different than kind of just your broad scale aquarium. All of this yeah. really specific stuff is so neat. And I think for the people that, that are really interested in the habitat and, you know, or the, you know, you, you get into one of a couple of different ways, right? You, you either find a fish that you really like and you start researching where that fish comes from and you start realizing, oh, wow, this other species is here and it has this relationship with this fish because either it it eats this fish or whatever it it preys upon the scales of this other fish and whatnot you learn about all those really interesting uh like symbiotic relationships and all these other sorts of uh just ecological relationships and such and it just it snowballs quickly and i Mm -hmm. think that's the cool thing about like biotopes specifically and replicating those um it's because there are so many different types of biotopes when you're talking so like a, a point like a great great talking point on this is again south america right we, yeah a large percentage of the aquarium fish in the hobby come from south america are mm-hmm. south america southeast asia um you know uh some from africa obviously you know on, on the the west side or the east side you know the rift lakes and all sure. that um but 
I think the coolest part is when, you know, you can, you can pick one of these fish out and uh, you can dig into the environment that it's coming from and you can replicate that at home. And I think it just, it just opens up so many avenues for you to get interested and involved. Um, I've seen a lot, like you said, I've seen a lot more people getting into biotope tanks. And, yeah. and again, South America, you know, I think there's a lot of different niches that are not maybe as well represented as the typical bundle of sticks with a bunch of leaves and <laughs> and, fins. and this is going to be, again, I'm not trying to get push buttons or anything like that. Cause I love that tank. In fact, I have a, a tank that I'm planning on setting up just for some, uh, uh, Nanostomus, uh, Morton Thalari, the, the, the red, be nice. cool red pencil fish, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, and there's that uh, brand new species that we just did a little oh, blurb yeah. about. Oh, it's it's, it's going to be in the new magazine, the upcoming one. It's exciting. There's a there's a gentleman up here uh, in Chicago slash uh, Milwaukee that has some, and I've just I I really want to see if he'll let me just come by, just take some photos or see <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, definitely. Person. But I've seen some photos on one of the the Carison, uh, uh Facebook groups, and mm-hmm. oh my god, they're stunning. Pretty amazing. Different. And yeah. even the even the regular like Morton Thalari are, are amazing as still is. beautiful, yeah. But the the the, just the body of red that's on that new species oh. is is nuts, you know. Yeah, it is. Uh, it'll be cool, but uh, For sure. yeah, I think the 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 black water South American biotope, you know, mm-hmm. um, I don't really think anything can be overdone when it comes to an aquarium because every person has a unique take on it. Mm-hmm. I think, it, you know, it definitely can get maybe like a little bit redundant in some ways, because sure. I think, you know, when you're sourcing inspiration from online and you're looking at other tanks inadvertently, you, you, you take inspiration and that picture is kind of stuck in the back of your head from that photo you saw on Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, a week back and all that jazz. But I think the most important part is, you know, making it specific. And I think that's the cool thing about biotopes, because um, unlike, you know, like nature aquarium or some of the other styles of aquascaping and things like that, uh, biotopes, you, you can get very specific. And like I was saying, with uh, South America in specific, I mean, there's more than just blackwater creeks imitating. Even within blackwater oh, yeah. creeks, there are so many trees, root structure types. Yes, uh, definitely subsets of that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. So there's a lot to be done in there. And again, this goes back to native fish here in North America too. There's a lot to be done here in North America. There's a lot of different habitats, you know. In Florida, you have some beautiful freshwater springs, which I know we've talked about before. <sighs> So, yeah, there's some good stuff in yeah. Florida. <laughs> um, uh, one of my favorite videos on the subject right now is uh, from Alex and Ryan um, from the aquascaping type. They did okay. a, a, a whole thing where they went down before uh, the Aquashella show in Orlando. They went to some of the local springs and took some video, underwater video, and you know did some photos and a couple of yeah. things. So they're online. Go check them out and all that cool. jazz. So Ryan's a good friend of mine, right? Alex too, and all that jazz. But um, some beautiful inspiration there for like a, a uh, and, and some of those species are commonly available, like uh, Bacopa carolina, your typical Bacopa. Yep. Comes from southeast. USA, you know, right. um, some of your other native species come from Florida and stuff. I believe like Lobelia cardinalis, things like that. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's some like emergent, you know, uh, varieties too, that paludariums are a great option for that as well too. But definitely, um, yeah, even within uh, North America here, you can have a, a planted biotope tank that's actually realistic to like uh, uh, peat swamps of, uh, of southern states with pygmy sunfish right sure. and, you know, oh that'd be great species or things yeah. like that so yeah there's a lot of variety and such uh even here locally in our backyards and stuff as well too yeah in fact, definitely uh close nearby to to where i'm at and whatnot i found a, a little like a little backwater like that was cut off from the main river and it yeah it has uh acidified with tannins and things like that and therefore plant life has grown significantly and there's sure. like a um, couple different types, like, you know, I've, parrot's feather is invasive here, but there's a bunch of that. And it's mm-hmm. really interesting, even just to take a photo for inspiration. You don't have to use those specific species, but sure. just taking that as a snapshot and imitating that with species and, and uh, placeholding species is a big part of that, right? So um, it's just interesting, you know, continent to continent. There's, there's all sorts of good stuff, right? Yeah, so. always. I know you've got some stuff from Peru that you're going to show us. Yes. So, uh, all right. Right before uh, COVID and uh, the you know the lockdown and all that jazz, um, I was fortunate enough to to go on a, a collecting trip in Peru uh, outside of Iquitos, um, and that was with MT Amazon. Um, 
Devin Graham and, and, and those guys and such, uh, they take you out on the boat. They take you to some really cool places. So we went up the Rio Napo on that, on that trip. So that was the, uh, the river tributary that we were on, um, which interestingly enough, going back to talking about different uh, biotopes, most of the time the water was so murky from all the sediments <laughs> washing in from the, from the Andes, right? Um, mm -hmm. That uh, it was considered white water, right? So the main <laughs> channel was, was, you couldn't see six inches down into it. It wasn't really black water. It was like a mixture of the two. And then you have these these channels where it flows into and those are the blackwater creeks that are running from other sources and things mm -hmm. like that or you know uh sediment has settled past the first you know however many yards and all that jazz but um yeah it was it was a neat experience because i think um prior to that trip i had really you know romanticized uh south america and it's not that that, that romanticization wasn't true it was just very different from what you see in the books <laughs> versus what actually takes place so let me let me uh share my screen here yeah and, good um i will pop this here we go so can you uh -huh. see this on here yeah i can so, picture time so, yeah <laughs> this is just a, a general shot of, of strolling down so we were basically on this big boat um it's like a houseboat essentially and uh everyone has their own room and things like that um is very, I liked it. I'm a big, I, I like camping a lot. So it was very much up my alley, but, um, you know, if you're used to five-star hotels and whatnot, you know, it, you, you know, it's a little different than that, right? So <laughs> you're not, you're not strolling on a luxury yacht or anything like that. It, it's, it's a little more bare bones of that nature, but it's still beautiful. And it's, it's really cool to be able to have that experience. And, uh, so yeah, this is the shot on the, on the, I believe this is either Rio Napo or this is when we were closer up into Baza and district. I think this was on the actual main channel of the Amazon River itself. So okay. yeah, this is just a, a general photo, you know, a uh, nice balmy 89, 90 degree day, uh, probably at around like 10 o'clock in the morning or so. Nice. Um, so, it, you know, just to show you, like, you know, when you're on the main channel and you're not yeah. in the forest, it's not quite what you see in the photos with tree frogs everywhere right. and, and all that jazz, right? Um, so we'll just go through here. Um, now when you are in the jungle, um, I also, again, I, I like to dabble in all sides of the hobby and all sides of the, uh, pet industry in general. So I'm also very big into like vivariums and terrariums as well too. Um, so yes, you've great. inspired my Mondays. You have hashtag moss oh, appreciation Monday yeah. and I'm like all about that hashtag now. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I, you know, some of those posts you've seen are probably from this trip that I'm showing you photos from and whatnot. It's some nice moss. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, there's moss. And that's the cool thing. And moss is, I don't know what it is, but a mossy log, whether it's in, you know, Virginia, Illinois, or sorry, not Virginia, Illinois, Virginia proper, the state and or Illinois or, you know, out in California or up in the, the upper peninsula in Michigan or in Peru, it always is just so lush and it's There's just something about moss. I don't know. Yeah. yeah it, <laughs> I think we all get that one. That's yeah. That's so. sure. But here's a, here's a good example of like a, a, a tree that is hosting all sorts of life on the side, you know, all these vining plants. Um, one of my favorite things was being able to see Marcravia, which is a, a, a group of uh, uh, shingling plants um, that are commonly sought after for terrarium and vivarium use and dart frog vivariums, things like that. Um, being able to see those in situ and in, in the wild is, I mean, that was, you know, call it a spiritual awakening or whatever <laughs> you want for me, but like being able to see where some of these things in the aquarium trade and in the pet trade come from was super cool it's honestly yeah. this experience and i i get it if you go to your local fish club and things like that there's always going to be some sort of i traveled to peru or i went to south america right. speaker engagement or whatnot but you know it's for good reason because it's 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 really neat to see where it's coming from and see the uh it is the, the economy of, of of how these fishes get from their wild habitat to your local pet store right mm -hmm. There's a lot of great resources online for that. And I know Amazonas Magazine has covered a that as well too, which is as great. As often as possible, yep. <laughs> exactly. So there's a lot of really cool plants, trees, all that fun stuff. I don't know right. what tree this was called, but uh, yeah, you, and 
when it comes to this tree, I'm not really a tree hugger. So it's, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, it's not something to lean up against. Yeah, to have. <laughs> yeah. Here's a, when you're getting closer into the shoreline, this is kind of what you'll see is a lot of, you know, vegetation on the sides, a mm. lot of fallen trees. And this is cool. Cause this is like typical black water tank, right. With yeah. the fallen branches and things like that. So it's really cool to be able to see that, but also see some of the other uh, habitats as well too, you know, Case in point, you also see a lot of the cool fish that we have here in the tray, like the marbled hatchet, right? Very this is, neat. Yeah. A good staple in the hobby, something that I think, uh, you know, if you haven't kept any hatchet fish, this is a beautiful fish, really great for black water mm -hmm. uh, tanks if you really want to mingle in that. You know, a little bit more sensitive than some of the other species in the genus, but um, for the most part, if you have a well established tank, they're, they're good. Just make sure you have a lid too, because uh -huh. uh, they are jumpers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's cool being able to see them in person. I uh, can't go to Peru and not take a picture of an orchid. So uh, yeah, that Peru is, I think, probably one of the biggest diversity of, of orchid species. I, you know, I have just yeah. started dabbling in, in micro orchids and orchids in general. I have quite a few friends, uh, uh, Matt Kowalski and uh, 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 one of my other friends, David, who, who both do a lot of orchids here in the States. And, you know, so it was really fun to, to send them some photos back and... Yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, more commonly though, for us fish people, uh, pistogrammas, you know, there's quite a few species there. That's beautiful. Interestingly too. enough, one of the, the, the things that I was thinking I'd be going to Peru and collecting, you know, bunches of all these different types of pistos. We only came across like four different species there. Huh. And that's because I don't think people realize just how big the Amazon is and all the tributaries. <laughs> oh, yeah. And when you talk of pistogramma, Massive. You know, some of these species like a Pistogramma borelii or however you pronounce it, you know, uh, yeah. or even the McMasteri, our typical apisto that is more aquarium strain these days and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times that's one of maybe two, three, four species occurring in that river or that part of it. Right. There's so much geographical isolation that happens because of how vast the seasonal changes um, that are going on in the Amazon and its tributaries that, uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's really neat um, to, yeah. to be there and see it, but also just kind of shocking that, you know, you have this huge diversity of fishes, but it is also very spread out too. Um, and it was also really neat to see all the fish that you don't see in the hobby as well too. Um, like you dusky hatchet fish that are like, you know, these six, seven oh, inch wow. long, uh, big hatchet fish that you can actually like fish fish for with a hook <laughs> and everything like that. Um, you don't really see them that often in the aquarium trade just because some things don't ship that well and don't transfer over and, you know, big tanks and all that jazz, right? But yep. here's another photo of some more oh, pistogramma. Nice. Uh, these are a pistogramma by Tamiata. I think that's, you have that dual, uh, the, the, the lateral line or the yep. two stripes along the, you know, or lateral line and all that jazz. But um, it was really cool. We uh, visited a couple of oxbow lakes, which are basically sections of the river that have been cut off after sediment is deposited and closes them off. So you essentially have these little isolated little pockets. And uh, it was cool. We'd go up the river one day and uh, some of the fish are the same species, but they look very different. So huh. these ones were a little bit more orange and these were found in one of the channels connecting to the main river. Mm. And then in one of the oxbow lakes that we were collecting in, there were some apistos that were much bluer, but the same species. So you get these little genetic variations and whatnot between them depending upon pockets and what's being selected for by the female to the male you know all that fun stuff yeah uh other classics like uh all the copella uh oh, yeah. splash tetras that was a cool one the future i really want to set up a paludarium for some of these because i think oh, they, that would be awesome <laughs> they make a wonderful fish um one of my yeah. buddies Tristan from Tristan's Tropical Fish up in uh, below Madison, Wisconsin. He he has had these before and he's bred them in captivity. And it's a super cool behavior to watch when they're jumping up against the glass and the males are shooting water with their tail to keep them moist, the eggs and all that jazz. So it's pretty neat. Again, going to behaviors. Um, this is my my little nightstand next to uh, the bed. <laughs> uh, of course, you've got your bags of epistogramma and your bags of uh, rivulus killifish on the side. Of course. <laughs> alongside all of your lovely uh, um, anti-malaria <laughs> medications and things like that. Mm, fun you know, stuff. <laughs> yeah, all that jazz. So just to give you guys That's a little funny. idea of that. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you can't go and not see a, a neon tetra. So we were able to find a Blackwater Creek. We only caught one. Uh, <laughs> Oh, actually, I think like four, but I got a good photo of this one. Yeah, that's so a great one. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. 
you know, a lot of fun to see the aquarium cool. classics in the wild. Um, here's a little habitat shot. So even in these small little creeks that you're just passing over, um, wow. we found all sorts of stuff in here from apistos to killies, you know, to- uh, Yeah, it seems like a good killie spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, primarily a lot of killies, a lot of the rivulets, which are joked about because, you know, when you get a rivulus, it's it's always brown colored, right? Like they're, <laughs> but there are some yeah. really beautifully <laughs> colored rivulus killies. I encourage everyone to check them out, you know? Um, they may not always be as flashy as some of their, you know, the African killifish counterparts. Right. They're gorgeous still, and they're really cool. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more of a uh, photo, a lot of mud, but still a lot of vegetation as well, too. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Frog, so, you know, gotta, gotta rep the... Always. The, the, you know, <laughs> the frog and such, but, um, you know, that's uh, cool. a couple of photos from that. So it's, you know, it's really cool How to neat. see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, to have seen it in person and experienced it and to have collected stuff. I brought some stuff back. You know, I still have some of my uh, blue tetras from one of that, that creek, actually, that I just showed you. I still have nice. them. They're going strong three plus years now. Actually, it's been four years now. I'm surprised they're wow. going strong. So <laughs> impressive. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. So that, it was a blast. And uh, I don't know, just the biggest takeaway from that is you, you realize how diverse and abundant it is. But um, again, not to, to get too environmental about it and everything, but you know, it's, it still is a finite resource, uh, resource and all that jazz. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, no, we have to be conscientious about how we use these things, you know, yep, yep, and, exactly. uh, education Very, is definitely on our side for that. The more we know, the better. So exactly. So yeah, um, yeah that was cool. So yeah, South America, cool place, you know, um, yeah, Peru's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to be able to go on a trip to, to Colombia is also, I have a couple Ooh. of friends that have gone to Colombia and, and so much. There. very different habitat. Um, and of course there's, uh, you know, folks like uh, Ty Straitman that do a lot of uh, video and mm -hmm. uh, 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 posting online about, um, you know, Brazil and the yeah. uh, Mato Grosso area, I believe is where- Yeah, it's incredible amount of diversity there. Oh my God. And if you want to talk about planted tank inspiration too, I mean, just the fields of uh, plants that you'd find here in the, I believe the, like Helanthinium, uh, Tenellum, I think is one of the ones you can find there. I okay. could be wrong, but anyways. Uh, yeah, you think a <laughs> I lot know of less cool about plants, plants, so yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah no, it's, it's, a, it's a neat area. And, you know, he's another good resource if you're looking for South America stuff to check out. So uh, okay. some inspirational content as well. So, cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so native fish, South American fish. Um, <laughs> it's all so good. Much. It's yeah. all good stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, I'm very thankful uh, to, to my job as well, too, and to Owase, uh, because when I travel around the Midwest, you know, who's to say some fish stores don't open up until 10 o'clock, right? So what are you going <laughs> to do with the three hours that you wake up before then? You, you know, go maybe... stick your face in the creek is what you do. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it's given me the opportunity to see some different environments like uh, Missouri, for example, is one that I, I'm looking forward to getting back out to because there's a lot cool. of really cool diversity there. Um yeah, St. Louis area, you go north, south, east, or west, any which direction for any amount of time, you'll find some really amazing creeks and wildlife there. Yeah. Um, again, if not, you know, not to collect, but just to view, you know, so it's, it's absolutely it's cool. well, and you know, that's where photography and videography can be so important, because even if you're not taking something, you're still kind of taking something back with you if you've got yeah. footage. And that's such a nice way to just I've raise awareness about what's there. So. Yeah, I've, I've honestly found that to be much more fulfilling than actually yeah. like putting up a tank and like going through the process of figuring, okay, where can I collect I it? Agree. Really <laughs> not. Um, yeah. It's kind of nice to be able to take the photo of the fish and then you get to return it to its natural environment and you mm -hmm. have appreciated it, but you're not disturbing it too much, right? Right, right. No, it's a good option for sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, We'll probably wrap up, but before we finish up, um, I know you do talks and you have some talks coming up. Where can people come stalk you? <laughs> all right. So um, for like every week, like weekly stuff and all that jazz, I've, I've got my Instagram right now and that's, you know, Jonathan Butkus Media. I haven't really thought of a better name and JB Media is kind of what I'm going underneath the guise of, but that has been taken on Instagram. So uh, we're just doing Damn. Jonathan Butkus Media. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> what it is i've got a weird spelling in my name so uh you know i'm sure we'll figure i don't know i'll post it somewhere or something like that but um yeah yeah that's primarily where i post right now um as i progress with the photography and videography i do have uh 
aspirations and, and plans to hopefully do some some YouTube uh, videos and things of that nature. Um, I also have started getting on TikTok a little bit for some of the native fish stuff. So again, that's good Jonathan idea. Buckus Media. Um, that's had quite a good response. A lot of people, you know, hey, I grew up looking for these fish and stuff. And so where a lot of the, where can I get these fish? Can you send me a pair of these darters? I'm like, nope, yeah, nope, I can't. <laughs> but here is a good start. If you're looking yeah. to see about keeping them, you know, Jonah's Aquarium that sells these fish legally, things like that. But check your local and state guidelines, you know, oh, harp that one, uh, you know, really get that one going. So um, yeah, that primarily right now, Instagram and, and TikTok is kind of where I'm, I'm doing that stuff. And, you know, it's time permitting and things of that nature. But uh, an exciting project that I do have going, I also am kind of big on the, the saltwater side of things. So sure. I do uh, quite a bit with like macro algaes and uh, planted saltwater tanks, right? Yeah, so, it's neat stuff. Um, I've always found that to be a great bridge between people that have always wanted to do saltwater and keep saltwater fishes or invertebrates, but mm -hmm. want the ease of something similar to like a low energy planted tank, you know, yep. print, things like that. Um, macroalgae tanks are a great transition between the two. You don't need to always go, you know, full bore with uh, SPS dominated tanks, the right. cost, the effort, uh, you know, it, it can be more. Um, and I always encourage people that, you know, hey, you just want to have that pair of clownfish, but you still want a very attractive decorative tank. Why not try it? You know, give, you don't need a crazy amount. In fact, the tank that I have back here is a 1999 uh, Perfecto Aquarium that I'm just retrofitting <laughs> the light. And I'm using one of the new Owase BioStyle hang on the back filters cool. that has the heater integrated into the filter in the box, ready Smart. to go. Um, so, you know, it's rated for a 30 gallon tank and it's on a 10, 15 gallon tank. So I have the flow there. I have the lighting. It's a twin star light. You know, it's a little bit more of a white light, but I, I appreciate that when it comes to macroalgae tanks and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, soft coral tanks and stuff. Um, you don't need anything super crazy. A lot of times what you have for a planted tank can easily be transferred over. So I'm very excited to be doing a talk for, uh, the aquatic gardeners association, um, they have their convention in September, October of this year here yep. in the Chicagoland area in Schaumburg, Illinois. I believe it's at one of the Hyatt Place hotels. Yep. Um, you can come by. I'll be doing my talk there. And um, nice. I'll have macroalgies and, and, and little vials for people to take a look at while I'm doing the talk. I'll actually be bringing a macroalgae tank that I'm setting up uh, to the show. So that way people can get an idea. It will be at the front, I believe, or something like that. It'll be around. Uh, we'll talk macroalgae. We'll have fun. Cool. Any, any questions, you know, uh, mixing salt water is not as intimidating as I think a lot of people make it out to be. Oh, Try it. for sure. It's go. not as hard as, as people think. <laughs> you know, I get, you know, salt water tanks are not for everyone, but nope. it definitely is for a lot more people than they, you know, give themselves credit to, to doing and being able to be capable of. So it's not that hard. You're just dealing with salinity. Otherwise you're still worried about phosphates, nitrates generally. So, um, but macroalgae will consume those. So it come learn about level. them. Yeah. Yeah. Come learn about them. It'll be fun. We'll talk shop. Uh, We'll have a good time. And uh, for those that don't know, like the Aquatic Gardeners Association is like the, uh, the U.S. is pretty much the largest uh, 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 aquarium plant club here in the U.S. Uh, an organization. I believe they're a non-for-profit and uh, they, they do a lot of cool stuff as far as that goes too. Um, but yeah, they put on this convention and it's a bunch of really cool speakers. Uh, you know, George Farmer, all sorts of folks that are going to be there talking, uh, Nick Kinzer is going to be talking about paludariums. So it's going to be really cool. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of really neat people. Yeah. That'll be a good um, show. We'll be there. So, yeah, yeah. so obviously it'll be a great show. <laughs> yeah. And then you also have the aqua shell events. You can also swing by and stop at, I'll be doing a, a macro algae tank display at the next aqua shell in oh. Dallas, uh, Owase and, uh, aqua life sponsor the, um, uh, the aqua gallery. And that is oh, a nice. booth. Yes. A booth that is set up to inspire and get people interested in aquariums of all types. Essentially, we, we, it's, a, it's a booth space that is rented out. Aqualife, you know, donates the tanks. They donate uh, some of the equipment. Uh, Waze uh, donates the filters and things like that. Um, and then together, uh, we bring in different um, aquascapers from that area and then also just from around the country. And uh, they come in, they, they do their scape. So there's everything from blackwater tanks to really nice lush nature aquarium tanks to uh, 
macroalgae tanks, you know, um, you know, all sorts hey, of Hey, fun. hey, pushing the macroalgae, yeah, yeah. geez. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's a fun event and uh, it, it's just like a gallery. So you can come walk through, the creators will be there. So the people that set up the tanks, if you have questions regarding it, you can come by and ask some questions, you know? Um, so it's very much to get involved and do ask them your questions about, okay, well, I've been having trouble with this plant or this or that. So um, that's a really fun event. And um, cool. it's really fun to be a part of that. And it's a really great group of people. And uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to call some of them my coworkers and, um, um, you know, it's, it's good stuff. It's yeah. Good stuff. It'll be fun. There's lots of good stuff to go to the rest of the year. So we'll yes. look forward to it. Of course. Of course. Well, thanks for chatting. This was a blast. And um, yeah, we'll chat more with you soon. And we'll put some photos and videos up and share all the cool natives. <laughs> I appreciate the time. And, and thank you for having me. Um, of course. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to, to chat on here and just to, to, to babble back and forth. <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Okay. Yep.